Today on the CIO Lifeline, we have Tanya Bankson, an EOS implementer of five years and another five years on the client side of the table. So lots of great experience that we're going to bring to this conversation. And it's centered around EOS, and that's the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Many components to that. Today's focus will be IDS. What does that mean? How do we have effective meetings? Lots of content to get through. Let's get started. How many times have you been in a meeting? You have five topics, one hour, three topics take 80% of the time. The last two are jammed in. You have someone who's rambling. You just want to choke them out. Shortly after that, we'll be showing our feature film. Your five attendants are Susan and Lance, and I'm Finn. We're here to make your trip as comfortable as possible. Thank you and have a safe and enjoyable flight. Tanya's going to help us dial this in, and she's great at cutting through the bullshit. So make sure you pay attention or she'll beat your ass. Yes. Honey badger don't care. Honey badger don't give a shit. Tanya, welcome to the show. How are we doing this morning? I'm really good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm uh, I'm excited to share some of this conversation and the ideas and help companies and businesses get stronger, better, and faster. Can you give us a little bit of background about what got you here today? Sort of your origin story. Um, grew up in an entrepreneurial family felt firsthand the highs and the lows of what that meant for our livelihood. It was feast or famine. So when I went off to college, I wanted to be in television. And off I went in front of the camera, and I was really bad at it. And I hated it, probably because I was really bad at it. But it led me to work behind the scenes where I could build something, evoke an emotion, get creative. And I had my first entrepreneurial seizure. I started my own media production company. And like a lot of entrepreneurs, I grew it to the point of needing to have people help me get all the work done. I was absolutely terrified of having people be beholden to me for their livelihood. Go back to my, how I was raised, right? It was just terrifying. I don't know about EOS back then. Might have made a difference. It was right about then I was stuck, frustrated, absolutely burned out. I was approached by um, a company that had high growth goals. And they said, we want you to help us. So I shut the business down, went to work for them, spent 15 years there, helped grow it from 10 to over 30 million in revenue. And that's where we implemented my first introduction to EOS, that we implemented it. So I sat on the same side of the table as my teams, helped build the vision, cascade it throughout the company. And I got so much juice from the impact that it had that when it was time for my next chapter, ta-da, poof, here I am. Very well said. And when I talked about a little bit earlier, and I, it's something I believe we can all relate to, is how meetings can be very ineffective, and we just don't get everything done that we need to. And so at a high level, because our topic today is centered around IDS, but at a high level, what would the three components of that be? Well, um, if I can actually back up and say there's, there's five main steps to great IDSing. Number one, you've got to have a masterful setup. Two, there's the I, identify the core root of the issue. The D is discuss, that's the brainstorming. S is the solve, you got to make a decision, take action. And then the fifth one is we've got to have a confirmation from the person whose issue it is, are you solved? And if you are, that allows the team to move on to the next issue. And by issue, I think it's really important to frame this up. An issue isn't just a problem. A lot of times it is. Issue in the dictionary is synonymous, meaning the same thing as topic. A lot of times it's a problem, but sometimes it's an opportunity. We can take advantage of something new. Sometimes it's, I need to share information right? Keep the team on the same page, not getting blindsided. Masterful meetings are where we can solve our biggest issues, not just talk about them, solve them. Does this apply to any meeting? Is there a particular audience that's more or that's better equipped for meetings like this? Like who should be in the room or can it be anybody? We want the entire organization 
to be in the right meeting pulse. Meaning, our account, in the EOS terms, the accountability chart is going to determine what meeting you're in. And yes, we want everyone in the organization eventually to be in the right meeting. Because if you've ever heard of the concept of the iceberg of ignorance, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that. I'm at the bottom of the iceberg, by the way, Tanya. <laughs> Below the iceberg. I'm going to explain it at a high level. There are four levels, right? The leadership team is at the top. Then you have your mid managers. Then you have your supervisors. And then you have your front line at the bottom. A hundred percent of our frontline people are painfully aware of all of the inefficiencies, imperfections, impurities, obstacles, barriers, opportunities, right? When you go a level up to their supervisors, it's somewhere in the vicinity of 70 something percent. They are aware of 70 something percent of what the frontline can see and knows. Go up at another level to the mid managers they're only aware of 9% of what the front line sees. And the leadership team is only aware of about 4%. That's a huge drop true. off. Oh, what a gap. So if you only have a leadership team IDSing, they become a bottleneck and they don't have the visibility into what truly is going on. The inverse is true. The front line only knows about 4% of what the leadership team is dealing with. So if we get everyone engaged in the organization in the right meeting from their seat on the accountability chart, they're going to solve issues more creatively. It's going to increase engagement and communication. Wow, that's really powerful. So one thing I comes to mind, because and, and we've all been there, right? So we're around the table and there's senior leaders around the table, there is that tendency to kind of wait, wait to speak, uh, follow the senior leads thoughts. People get in line. People sometimes can be sheep. Maybe I'm being pessimistic, but where I'm going with this is what I'm hearing is that there's an importance to have a good facilitator in the room. Nailed it. Boom. The facilitator is the person who should be keeping the meeting on track and truly keeping the team disciplined around those five steps of great IDSing. Think of an orchestrator, the orchestrator, the person who is um, standing in front of the symphony. Conductor. An orchestrator, the conductor. Oh, yes, words. Wow, is it early? Uh. The conductor doesn't sit in a seat and play an instrument, they make the music happen. But a facilitator in our meetings has two roles. They're conducting, being disciplined on keeping things on track, but they are also a participant. And so those are two very different things and shifting your energies and gears can be challenging, but it is not impossible. But teams that don't have that mindset and truly say, you, me, I am the facilitator for today's meeting, you're leaving it up to chance. The idea of solving big issues in a meeting is something relatively new to a lot of organizations. They talk about it and they say, go away and come back with the, you, the solutions where this, you actually solve it and you give tasks. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that because you get a lot of momentum by actually solving things as a team with actionable items, correct? The setup on this is teams have to go into the mindset. This is not a normal conversation. Here's what we're used to. We're used to diving in and we want to talk about it. We want to give the team history and examples and reasons why we're pissed off and furious and, and exasperated and all these things, and we're wasting time. So if we are being a great facilitator, it sounds like this. Whose issue is it? What do you need? And whoever's issue it is, they start the sentence with, I need I need to get information, help, or clarity. 
I need to get a decision. I need to give information, keep the team on the same page so we're not blindsided, or they simply take a shot at what they think the core root of the issue is. Those are four kind of frameworks to set up a great sentence. I need. Why does this matter? Because the I in IDS is all about asking great questions. It allows the team to direct their questions in a meaningful way. Because otherwise what happens, they're just kind of in the dark, fumbling around, going, I don't know. Oh, it kills our No, no, no. And so the great facilitation is you can't move to the I without the one sentence. And when we start hearing things like, well, it all started when I was three and here's why it's making me mad. And they're going to go, uh, 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 they're not so secretly going to cut people off and say, what do you need? Tell the team what you need. God, I had a therapist that did that once. Yeah. It is so master. That sentence is such a masterful sentence in other areas in our lives, <laughs> therapy, right? But when we start hearing people criticizing things, because criticism is a lazy way of asking for what you need. When I hear criticism, the first thing I go to, like a moth to a flame is, no, 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 tell the team what you need. We are here to solve it. So we can move on once we hear the one sentence. And the facilitation will sound like, all right, team, pepper them with questions. The questions can be couched with ask why five times, right? You get an answer to why does this keep happening? Probe again, ask why to that. Probe again, ask why. We're getting to the core root. Most of the issues that a company has are directly related to people, right? We, we got to dig into that core root of the issue. Where is it? So as we're asking questions, the facilitator is going to be listening and there's a light bulb that should go on at some point. Team, I'm hearing X is the core word of the issue. And we're looking around the table for heads to either nod, yep, agreement, or nope. It's really important to understand why this is important because what will happen eventually is we're going to get off track. It's normal because we want to be asked, well, what about this? And what about that? Right? The octopus and the tentacles. Whoa. If we are clear on what we're solving, when other issues gurgle to the surface, we can stay on track by putting those additional issues on the issues list, but still being laser-like focused on the first one at hand. You can't solve them all in one IDS. A few moments later. So when we get the team's agreement, we move on to the discussion. Okay, team, we're going to discuss this. We're going to brainstorm. We need all the ideas. What are we going to do about this? No idea is a bad idea. Because even in the, some of the worst, like, out there ideas, there could be two, five, ten percent gold that we can either idea stack on where we can throw out the rest and go, there's something there. It starts with brainstorming. Great brainstorming doesn't have judgment initially because we shut people down. But at some point in the discussion, we've got to get the serum. And a lot of this requires a lot of team health and trust, enough to call the issues out, enough to have healthy debate. What are we going to do? How are we going to solve this? Because teams and people within the teams that feel heard and respected are so much more likely to commit. So the facilitation sounds like, have we heard from everybody? You know, hey, Tanya, you've been pretty quiet. What do you think? Uh, the temperature goes up in the room and we know that this is like, there's a point where we're like, this will get unhealthy. So what do we need to do to keep the temperature in a healthy range if it's too low when everybody's kind of sitting back waiting for that one leader to speak, we're not operating as a great leadership team because there's, if there's five people in the room, we should be speaking 20% of the time as individuals. That's a healthy team. So the facilitation will sound like, all right, do we have all of the ideas? Are we ready to move to the solve and make a decision? We get the nods, the yes. 
The facilitation can sound like this. We recap the issue. We can ask the question, who's making this decision? Do we have a decision? Do we know what we want to do? We get the decision. What are we going to do about this? Okay, what are the to-dos? Because you can't just make a decision without taking action. Because who else needs to know about this? Do we need to update a process? Do we need to talk to a person and say a thing? Do we need to um, update a scorecard? Do we need to have a conversation, a tough one, a great one? Whatever it is, you got to take action. It could be one to-do. It could be a series of to-dos from multiple people. It's whatever you need. Recap those to-dos. Recap the decision. That's the S in the solve. We make a decision. We take the to-dos. That final fifth step, the confirmation, go back to the person, whoever's issue it is, are you solved? And it could be, are you solved for now? And if the answer is yes, move on. We're going to move on to issue number two. Now, when you say, are you solved, that, are we saying that we've, we're satisfied with the next steps are, or are they truly solved? And if we're not truly solved, that would be the next meeting? Okay, so if we're solved, what we're saying is we made a decision, and if we follow through with the to-dos, we believe that issue will go away. Okay. And so we are counting on that person to get, or the people, to get the to-dos done to make them go away, to make the issue go away. And if it doesn't, put it back on the issues list and resolve it. So, Tanya... I had plans for this week. Like, how long is this meeting? Okay, it depends on where you are in the organization. The leadership team is going to spend 90 minutes once a week. The first 25 minutes of their meeting are team health and trust with a great personal and professional best. Then they're going to recap how their scorecard numbers, drop down any number in, into their issues list that's off track or they um, need to solve, drop down any rocks that are off track or they need to know about or get a decision, any people headlines, good or bad, drop it down to the issues list. And then those to-dos that I mentioned, right? Whether it's we've got a frequent flyer that's not getting their to-dos done, whether it is I need to get a recap, or I've got a question about X, Y, or Z, it all populates the issues list. Because in that first 25 minutes, it's reporting only so we don't get off track. But we are perfectly clear on our most important numbers, our rocks, our people, and our execution in the last week, and we're not off track. And our issues list is everything that we didn't solve last week stays. Anything that comes up throughout the week that we don't need to solve in the moment. And anything that comes up at the top of our meeting. It's like idea stew. We put it all in there. And the team rallies around that issues list. And their job is to prioritize the three most important things that we need to solve this week to keep the company on track. Generally speaking, it's your numbers and your rocks, but not always. There's a a philosophy and a flow to this. When we say these are the most important things, this is where the team, in a healthy way, should drop a shoulder and throw an elbow and say, I'm going to fight for us to win. These are the most important things. We don't start a meeting with, let's just do these because they're easy. Like, no. No, 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 because we're getting distracted potentially with the urgent instead of the important. Yeah, and that happens a lot. And Tanya calls it out and other still there's call that out. It's like, oh, well, let's just knock these three out real quick. They're not the most important at all. But let's, you know, people want to go to the easy in the urgent, not say, hey, what is big in this company? And I'll tell you what, the meeting format's awesome, but IDS and what Tanya is explaining is when you – get good at solving problems, issues, because most exec teams are dealing with issues. They're either dealing with initiatives or issues. And when you get good at issue solving, it's like you get some serious momentum. And it's, it's, this is a great skill for everybody at the exec, all the way down the company. But if the exec team typically isn't really good at this. 
it is one of the hardest tools in EOS to master because it's not a normal conversation. I know I mentioned that before, but it truly is. We expect to walk in because we're trained from a really young age, right? In school. How do you get an A? Sit next to it, right? Right, copy on bribery. <laughs> bribery. <laughs> Sit next to the smartest person, right? Gee, <laughs> we have the right answer. So the point is, like, that's how we're raised. Right? Have the right answer. And so a lot of teens are like, I don't have a f-ing clue what any of this means or what we should do about it. So they lean back. We've all seen it. We've all seen it. Like, and, and so I, on the customer side, and, and that's been my world for, for 30 years, it's, it's, you get folks in a room, it's rare that there, there's structure, uh, and you're always waiting for the senior person in the room to speak first. And, and that's why I like, not always is a strong word. It's not, you know, I'm, I don't want to be paint a broad brush here, but, but back to the importance of, of good facilitation. Uh, maybe speak a little bit to how you identify who that facilitator is. Cause if you're in, so if you, Tanya are engaged with companies, I imagine you come in and you, and you play that role and help educate and train. Are you helping pick who that facilitator is? Are you trying to keep it organic within the group? Cause I can't, I don't want to downplay how important that role is to make these meetings as effective as they can be. You touched on something that I think is way before the facilitator which is trust, right? And I, 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 I hate bringing us back to therapy all the time, but as we were just talking through that, I'm thinking, look, we have to trust each other. We have to be accountable to each other. And then, because I think the reason most people don't want to make a decision is because they're afraid. And Tanya, you uh, read yeah. Andy Duke, Thinking in Bets. Any chance you've read that one? <laughs> Right. I have. Right. So let's get yep. a system. Let's trust our process. And then let's just make the decision that appears to be right. No, you're absolutely correct. Right. The answer is always in the tools. I say that to teams a lot. And there's a lot to unpack there because this is what's um, most at play in companies where we spend either the majority or all of our time getting smarter. Let's get better, faster, more efficient, do things better to satisfy our customers and our employees. But we don't spend that truly impactful time building trust. You're either building trust or you are eroding it. There's really no in between. Like a half truth is a full lie. The tee up, you do a good job at the tee up of a meeting, the ground rules. The rules. Maybe you can go through the rules of the meeting from the get-go because you do a good job at getting everybody's mind right to be in this meeting and be a participant. The ground rules are for a session with me, let's have some fun. There's no reason why we can't have a little bit of fun and do the hard work. There's no electronics. There's no politicking. We need you to participate. You've got to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Open and honest. And I walk through what I mean by those things. Often, too often, on that um, continuum of healthy conflict, it's generally one of two ways that teams operate, where you don't have enough healthy conflict and it's complete avoidance or artificial harmony. That's where most teams are. The other side of that, it is so destructive It's abusive, it's dictatorial, it's competitive, and there's fear. We don't operate a great company on either side of that. So those rules of engagement simply call out when we need that healthy conflict. It's not every issue we need it. They've put the rules in place. They've committed to abiding by them. And so we get some unhealthy behavior that is all of a sudden going to scarf our psychological safety. We can call them out and go, mm, 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 cross the line, come on back. Aren't you, are you sure this isn't therapy? It is a ton of therapy. Really? Yeah, so it is. I'm digging this. It, this is, it, 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 
It is Tom. It, 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 it's right. business yeah. therapy yeah. all yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> it is industrial okay. psychology. How, how many, yeah. how many companies then stick to the formula? So if you've done a hundred engagements, how sticky is this process? Do, do they commit? Do you see companies committing to this over time? Um, yes. And for an implementer like me, I can expect one out of 10 or 12 teams that say, yep, let's go, Tanya. They won't follow through with a full engagement um, to get uh, to the point where they've mastered the tools. They're 80% strong. They're ready to take it on their own. Um, because when we paint a picture of what Don looks like and the tools, EOS is all about keeping it simple. The tools, there's not that many in our toolbox. We don't need to make it complicated to make it effective. But teams often confuse simple with easy. And it is not. Because we are dealing with beautifully flawed human beings, right? Who all come to the table populating that third entity that make up teams with our own trauma and our own definition of trust and conflict and where we are in our professional journey. Yeah, I do. I do like what you said. It, it, it is simple in nature, which is which is great, right? If because if it is truly complex, that you have that, that that can be a tough go. But I love the simplicity of it. But also, what resonates is that there's people involved. You know, I, I'm big into security and implementations for organizations. And that's where it falls. Now we call them happy clickers. You know, it's, you know, ransomware, that's, that's the biggest headline cyber threat, but it usually starts with somebody clicking something they shouldn't. It comes down to that very basic concept, but at the root cause, it's a human being. You know, I said, if we could just fire everybody, uh, companies will be secure, but uh, we're not, we can't. Oh, because there's going to be the next level of then um, taking a company down because uh, we found a way to infiltrate their robots or their automations, right? And so, right, yeah, in ten years, be like, well, it's because of the robots, mm -hmm. guys. You know, I thought we taught them not to think. It's right. um, what is? But I don't know what we would call that. Is you look at EOS as a structure? I mean, think of how many small companies and by small let's call them two to ten million they just can't break through and they're great companies they make a great product they are awesome at what they do they can't break through why not most companies in the first five years fail because actually they've been quite successful they're great companies they hit a ceiling they can't break through and actually it's companies just like those that make some of the best eos companies they're stuck, they're frustrated, they're more afraid of the status quo than they are of change. They want more and they simply lean in. Many of the companies that don't make a full journey actually aren't in enough pain, whether they just don't see it as a problem, right? You got people actively working against it um, or you've got such unhealthy dysfunctional teams and you don't have somebody standing up and going, we're not going to take it anymore. You know, what's cool about the system is, you know, like we, Tanya, we've seen some second, third generation owners too that had inherited old systems and they spent so much time maintaining the system versus working on the business, right? And when they adopt a system like this, a proven system, they get back into the business versus their way. They think it's their magic. And it's, it's not their magic. You know, a, this is like proven system stuff. So you could get to have fun again and start working in and on the business. You know, there's a lot of business leaders out there. They, they read books, they consume them. They're looking for a cure um, and they just haven't found it yet. And typically they hear about EOS or they've got, you know, an, a colleague or another business leader that has, you need to read this traction book. You need EOS. And they go, wow, what is this? Right. And they read it and they're like, holy cow, it's simple tools. It's going to engage everyone in the business eventually. 
And they're going to tell a story about they were ready to sell their company and they were ready to just shut it down. And all of a sudden, to your point, Craig, the business got fun again. They got to get back to why did they, why were they the entrepreneur? And it's because they got the right things in place. So you're going to work hard staying the same. You're going to work hard changing, getting more. Got to pick. And Tony, you know, it's even like in our roles as CIO, a couple of my clients, CIO, I have to go to the CEO of these $150, $300 million companies said, your system sucks. You know, it's the old OKRs. It's the homegrown business systems. I'm like, you, this system isn't working. You need a new system. Let's do an EOS trial. And boom, takes off. But talk about try going to a CEO running the company that's making money, making a profit, but their system was absolutely horrible. It's for the betterment of the company also, right? And as long as they don't have ego, which is something can be a challenge, but you're trying to help them, <laughs> right? You got to help them. Delicately <laughs> well said. <laughs> no, but, but you, you always <laughs> talked about driving into the storm, Craig. I love, and I love how you say that. Yep. that. That feels like a moment. And and you get around the ego. I, I, you talk about a trust builder moment. I just, I think that's a very powerful you know, example. I, usually when I go into that, I ask, can I give you some constructive criticism? So I try to ask for permission yeah, come, first. You come in the form of a question, <laughs> but, another good tip. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the form of a question. Or is going to come <laughs> right. in and beat your ass. Uh, that, that, that's the next comment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do I have permission to tell you the truth? Do I have permission to give you feedback? They know it's coming. We're not going to blindside them. And it, it sets them out. It's beautiful, right? It's a great technique. This is applicable to any business, whether you're running on EOS or not. So steal it, take it, help it make you better. All right, team. Thanks again for today's episode. Great content, Tanya. I hope it's not the last time you're on the show. There's so much to unpack here, and I bet you there's 10 episodes at least that we can bring to the table. Thanks again. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. You have someone who's rambling. You just want to choke them out. Claudia is going to help us choke them out. And she's going to help us yeah, choke them out. Throw punch it. Yeah. Tanya's going to cut through the bullshit. Yes. That's um, actually right. good, man. Yeah. I like it. Somebody's got to. <laughs> she, know, she knows how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> she knows how to yeah, do it. it. Yes. I get the impression she's good at that. <laughs> got a pretty sharp knife in that area. I digressed a little bit, so I'll get back on track. That was solid, though. Thank you. Um, so we, we will... I need a couch and a box of Kleenex. Oh, I'm need, fresh out of Kleenex. Hey, but, I need more coffee. <laughs> I need more coffee too. This is good. <laughs> um, you got the wife as a business owner and husband is in the business and he is an absolute f***ing terrorist, but she's like, well, I'd have to get a divorce if I fired my husband. And I'm like, maybe two things can be true. <laughs> not that I'm looking to you take half your shit. We know, right? we know. Right. And not that I want to encourage divorce here, but what I'm saying is but you're not separate really, right? them. There's some good grounders. And then, then there, there was, was three. Are we going to talk about Tom? Wait, no, that's unhealthy, dysfunctional behavior. We talk to people, not about Shh, them. Sign me up. <laughs> sign me. Right. No. Not the. Not the person, That's the right. issue, right, Tanya? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Is it, it, and she, okay. They hit a ceiling. Right. This is not timeout, by the way. I'm not a well, referee. Right. They hit a ceiling. <laughs> it's the reason. I thought you were telling them to shut the f*** up. <laughs> I, can, I can do that, too. Tom, shut the f*** up. No, That's kidding. right. Um, it's the reason you know why most. are real, right? I'm really upset yeah. by that. <laughs> 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 Oh, wow.